Hi there, this is Patrick Belton of InsuretechFintechRevolution.com. This presentation brief uh, concerns blockchain and its potential impact on insurance organizations and the broader industry. As the property and casualty or general insurance sector grapples with rising costs and a broad shift in the consumer demand away from traditional products, many are eyeing distributed ledger technology or blockchain as an answer to these new woes. Disrupt or be disrupted, that is what your organization faces. Given its tremendous potential, distributed ledger technology, or blockchain, it's rapidly gathering momentum worldwide. In part, you're seeing this reflected with investment funds pouring money into blockchain development and venture with venture capital infusion. And some of this is actually comparable to the early days of the internet. And the reality is, if you look at the banking portion of the financial sector, uh, about 90-95% of the world's banks have initiated some form of blockchain projects. Uh, and that was as of, as of about 2017, and we're already in 2020. And through these blockchain efforts, not just in banking, but other areas of the financial world, such as insurance, it is expected, anticipated, that we are already seeing some annualized industry savings being realized from uh, some of the embracement of uh, blockchain technologies. In the insure tech space, we have seen over the past uh, four or five years significant momentum with uh, both incumbent insurance companies, but also startups who are actively engaged in proofing and commercializing blockchain applications. And you're seeing this reflected in the um, global uh, venture capital numbers that are going into diving, pouring into insure tech startups. We need to get a few basics out of the way. So one is, is a definition, a smart contract. What is a smart contract? Well, look, simply put, uh, it is a self-executing contract. So it's contracts that, be, that can be converted to computer code, stored, and replicated on a system and then supervised by a network of computers that run the blockchain. Smart contracts help you exchange money, property, um, shares, or, or anything of value in a transparent and conflict-free way while avo avoiding the services of a middleman, such as an insurance broker. So smart contracts, they not only define the rules and the penalties around an agreement in the same way that a traditional contract does, but it also automatically enforces those obligations. So the best way to describe smart contracts is to compare the technology to a vending machine. Ordinarily, you would go to a lawyer or a notary, pay them, and wait while you obtained your document. But with smart contracts, you simply drop something like, say, a Bitcoin into the vending machine, which is a ledger, and your escrow uh, or your driver's license or whatever drops into your account. So now let's briefly uh, expand on blockchain and understand it. What is blockchain? Well, the best way to understand blockchain technology is to simplify its basics. So, for instance, a blockchain is essentially a database to store and record a set of transactions. For example, a smart contract or a currency transaction. So the blockchain is a database to store and record a set of transactions as a block, hence the name chain of transactions being stored as a block, blockchain. This is a distributed ledger, which is akin 
to a database. So a digital record of who owns what within a given ledger. So it's very, very simple. Now, crucially, with blockchain, there is no central administrator of the distributed ledger technology. Each block of transactions are validated by computer owners. So the transactions in the database can be viewed by anyone who has been granted permission. So let's, let's state, restate this in other words. So blockchain is the decentralized means of allowing collective bookkeeping in an immutable ledger. It's known as distributed because it is shared between many different parties rather than being on a central intermediary to furnish the system with trust. Point three, the ledger can only be updated by majority consensus of the participants in the system. And once entered, information can never be erased. Point four, the blockchain, therefore, contains a certain and a verifiable record of every single transaction ever made. So now let's touch upon the subject of transformation. How might blockchain or distributed ledger technologies transform the general insurance industry, the property and casualty insurance industry? With the right planning and, and the right implementation, this technology has the potential to fundamentally transform the insurance industry. But the question is, how? Well, three things jump to mind uh, if you look at three transformative points. One is automate and enhance. The second transformation area would be underwriting efficiency. And the third would be simply what I'll call process peace of mind. So now let's go into three subsequent slides, which will just uh, touch on each of those uh, three transformation areas. So regarding blockchain's ability to potentially transform the insurance industry, the first area where it could do this concerns automation and enhancing. So what does this mean? It means that, well, look, a variety of trends and uh, cost drivers are steadily pushing insurance organizations into uh, the blockchain domain. So consumption of insurance products we're seeing is going to become increasingly episodic. So episode type insurance products is, uh, will be increasingly will be introduced into the marketplace. And this is driven by, by demand, consumer demand and driven by need, more so than really anticipation. So we're also seeing that the ownership of risk is increasingly separated from the ownership of assets. That's a key thing that we see in the marketplace in general in the economy. So the role of intermediaries is splitting between price comparison and value add advisory and insurers ability to pool risks across customers is decreasing as customers become more informed so the demand for products with low fees and lower commissions is rising simultaneously with greater demand for data and regulatory requirements Legacy technologies have proven incapable of keeping pace with both evolving customer client requirements and all of this emerging financial technology that we're seeing in society. And there's rising regulatory demands and these are affecting overall profitability. So the promise held out by blockchain as one solution to these challenges is the technology's potential to improve the overall customer experience and to automate key specific business processes. So early adopters of blockchain are concentrating on sales, underwriting, and claims processing, and it will have a substantial impact, especially on the processing and handling of claims. So a second transformational area uh, on the insurance industry concerning blockchain uh, circles around underwriting efficiency. So across the sales and underwriting value chain from sales on through onboarding, risk assessment and quoting, 
blockchain can deliver benefits uh, throughout this process. And that includes things such as the efficient exchange of the information, uh, improved risk profiling, and also automating through smart policy. So let me just touch on each of those. So underwriting efficiency, there's three points where blockchain's a benefit. First point, efficient exchange of information. Because of the trusted digital identity and asset provenance detail that's av available on the ledger, manual information gathering requirements are reduced. So there's a tremendous benefit there. So you can think of it, some insurance brokers and carriers. One example of this would be uh, the traditional Bordero. You have broker who has maybe perhaps a program for not-profit insurance and they do a monthly Bordero. Often that's an Excel spreadsheet or it used to be on paper and that's submitted manually to the carrier. Well, blockchain automates all that. So now the second point of underwriting efficiency concerns improved risk profiling, and this is crucial. As risk assessments are based on trusted and verifiable property and insuree information, the accuracy in the profiling increases, and that's really important to uh, accuracy of rating and such. The third point um, concerning underwriting efficiency is the automation through smart policy. So a regular paper policy will, will be replaced by a smart contract, which is available on the ledger, and that will reflect the negotiated loss and coverage conditions and enable, crucially, enable the automatic enforcement of the conditions and the terms of the contract, automatic enforcement. And this is actually profound change on the insurance industry, but also actually on the legal industry as well. So a third transformational uh, key point in, in terms of blockchain on the insurance industry circles around uh, process peace of mind. So let's discuss that. For claims processing, blockchain can deliver automation through trusted and verifiable claims submission data and by using codified business rules in smart contracts to identify the loss liability. So manual processes to verify documents and to verify and validate and assess loss, those can now be reserved for cases um, of escalation where human judgment is necessary. But for all the other areas, human judgment's not needed. It can be automated. So as with the sales and the underwriting value chain, the claims processing stands to gain substantial enhancements. And there's a number of things included in this. So basically I'll mention four of them. One would be automated claim submission. Second would be reduced fraud. The third would be an enhanced customer experience. And the fourth would be automated compliance. So let's touch on that. The automated claim submission benefit, either by the insuree or even automatically by the asset itself in the case of smart assets, the claim submission can be simplified and accelerated due to the digital interface with the smart contract. It's basically essentially done in real time without human involvement. The second point benefit is reduced fraud. So due to the availability of reliable asset and customer data, insurance organizations will be able to detect mistakes and outright fraud very early in the process. So ultimately reducing the frequency of illegitimate claims. Third point is the enhanced customer experience. So the automatic payouts on the claims will mean no manual effort is required from the insuree either to make the claim or to receive payment. Meanwhile, time to payout can also be reduced considerably. Now, all of this ties in to uh, the Internet of Things and some other areas of technology. The fourth point is automated compliance. So regulators and other authorities will have on-demand access to complete transaction and historical data. This is improving the accuracy of their controls while also preventing redundant operational costs from insurers and reinsurers alike. There are though the challenges of getting it right Beyond all this transformative potential of blockchain, there are some adoption and implementation challenges 
that one must be made aware of. Three or four things come to mind, such as determining who funds the costs of new infrastructure and overcoming um, disparate incentives all across the value chain. And then there's the notion of establishing uh, st global standards that are both scalable and easily adopted. And then reaching critical mass in participation are all necessary to blockchain viability in the property and casualty insurance space. And similarly, um, governments and regulation must be established. Uh, there's policy issues around digital identity and things like cross-border standards and jurisdiction. These still need to be ironed out. And there's legal risks that need to be enumerated around this. And then monetary policy under a dual digital fiat currency type model will also need to be managed. And there's operational challenges, scalability and performance, uh, cryptology and security, uh, simplicity even, and, and importantly, interoperability. So insurers need to be resilient in the face of security attacks, and they must have access, um, all insurance organizations, have to uncomplicated solutions that can communicate effectively across different systems. What does blockchain mean for insurance brokerages? It's a good question. Eventually, the entire insurance ecosystem of insurance carriers, brokers, reinsurers, claim administrators, the regulators, and many other third-party organizations that are directly or tangentially involved in the business of insurance will move to a blockchain-enabled framework where data duplication, manual processing, and many other current inefficiencies will cease to exist. Every operational aspect of the insurance industry will be impacted by blockchain. But for now, most brokers can be comforted that the technology is stuck essentially where their early internet was in the early to late, uh, well, somewhere in the 1990s, just out of the starting blocks. There is still time for brokers to continue to evaluate the impact of blockchain and determine how to take necessary steps to become part of this new technology framework. However, brokers cannot sit back and ignore a near-term, medium-term future in which insurance transactions and servicing are likely to occur on a blockchain platform. Hence, the competitive challenge for brokerages is how well positioned they are when it comes time to channel blockchain technology in their, within the scope of their operations. So a broker's ability to host blockchain enabled solutions in their own blockchain powered platforms is the key to thriving in an environment that is irremediably moving towards automation and self-executing smart contracts. One of the positive attributes of blockchain, yeah, among its, you know, it's got its disruptive uh, uh, capabilities that'll be introduced into the insurance marketplace, but one positive is that it should eliminate errors and emissions occurrences between a broker and the customer. For example, an insurance uh, company might settle or store a smart contract involving a transaction with an insurance buyer in the blockchain where it is registered and timestamped, ensuring authenticity. This block is then linked to additional blocks that were previously stored in the database by the other authorized participants in the insurance ecosystem, thereby creating a chain of transaction blocks, hence the concept of blockchain. Notably, all the blocks are secured from tampering, from revisions and forgery and fraud, and allowing for a full and complete audit trail. 
all the relevant parties to a particular transaction which become part of the blockchain, which can store hundreds of thousands of records which no longer need to be verified and validated. Now, since human involvement in the inner workings of the blockchain is essentially removed, a new corporate structure representing the ownership, management, and control of the blockchain can be created. This is called a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO, D-A-O. These corporate structures are predicated upon replacing human governance with a programming code written by a service provider. In fact, they are contemplating replacing complicated legal interpretations with clearly executed code. These are in the evolutionary stages right now and are extremely complicated to understand, I might add. What is comprehensible, though, is the perceived value of blockchain-enabled technology. Distributed ledger technologies and smart contracts increase transparency and enable more self-enforcing automation. They have changed the way in which a network of non-trusted partners can function, enabling them to generate a shared digital ledger in a safe, transparent, and immutable way via consensus mechanisms that do not require a central authority or intermediary. Alarm bells should be ringing. It's, it's the latter point in the previous slide referenced above that should ring alarm bells in the mind of uh, many insurance organizations, in particular brokerages. At present, brokerages not only provide impartial advice and negotiate on behalf of their customer clients, they are considered, uh, the, the brokerages are considered trusted partners that ensure that customer client gets the best insurance deal possible. So they're matching their risk profile uh, with and the needs of that customer at the best price with the best and most appropriate risk transfer mechanism, whether that be insurance or capital markets provisions or whatever. But brokerages, they also verify the terms and the conditions of insurance policies, as well as the trustworthiness of underwriters. Blockchain-enabled technologies effectively assume most of those responsibilities that I just articulated. So if a DAO, a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, a DAO, that is enabled through blockchain technology and smart contracts, is explored, if you explore this in the context of insurance itself, well, one can imagine a truly decentralized marketplace for insurers to interact directly with the customer clients with, critically, no role for a broker. Optimal pricing, full transparency, and even risk pooling would be automatically brokered through smart contracts and verified by distributed consensus. Now, it's important to note, while none of this will happen overnight, blockchain-enabled technology will, for certain, disrupt the long-standing ways in which the insurance ecosystem currently functions. The brokers able to develop a vision and redefine how they add value and interact with both clients and underwriters will be the ones best able to leverage the potential of blockchain. Now, as for the brokers unable to achieve this type of momentum, those brokerages are likely to lose their way and rapidly be put out of business. If the job of the broker changes considerably, which will, I can tell you, occur in the blockchain world, then the total numbers of brokerages operating the marketplace will shrink considerably. It's important for us to discuss and highlight what all of this means for claims, for the truth, and for fraud. So the potential for the insurance industry in engaging blockchain-enabled technology, it's huge, it's massive, and it's transformational. By improving data integrity and security, 
insurance organizations would no longer need to rely on a customer's version of the truth. For instance, when a claim is filed. And that is because the blockchain contains an inherently verified and authentic record of all of the underlying information. And it's reducing the possibility of fraudulent claims while also pairing the time, the effort, and the cost involved in the actual claims processing. It, it's reducing that. So let's walk through a claims example involving, um, well, how about travel insurance? Because this reveals uh, blockchain's value. So this example concerns a policyholder being reimbursed for the cost of a plane ticket if the plane fight, flight is canceled. So at present, that policyholder would file a claim with the insurer pointing to the canceled flight as the reason. The insurer either trusts the person or takes the time to discern whether the flight was in fact canceled. With blockchain-enabled technology, the external data on the flight can be automatically entered into the distributed ledger system by the airline as an authorized participant or linked data source. So the smart contract between the policyholder, the customer, and the insurance organization is also in the ledger and linked to the airline's data. So a coded algorithm takes over from there, ensuring that the claim is truthful and immediately in real time cutting a check to the claimant. Thus, it is a much faster and more secure manner of processing relevant information. In the context of an insurance contract, you provide for an automated claim settlement that is based on certain triggering events happening. Say, for instance, the trigger is predefined as a certain category of hurricane. If an authorized news source or relevant government weather agency uh, reported sustained winds over a certain threshold that equate to this particular hurricane category, well, this information now goes into the blockchain. There is no need for the insurance company or an intermediary like a brokerage to validate evidence of the hurricane for claims purposes. As long as the information meets the terms and the conditions of the smart contract between the insurance organization and the policyholder, the customer, it automatically determines the claims payout to the insured party and then it activates this payment. So what, what we can envision is that in the future, the Internet of Things, I, or IoT as people call it, will, the Internet of Things will join the list of authorized providers of information to a given blockchain. In other words, sensors in a car will report to the blockchain that the vehicle was in an accident. The sensor will even provide the data on the extent of the damage and where the accident location occurred, which then becomes part of the claim automatically filed in the blockchain. It's a, it's a beautiful process. It's seamless. So not only does the driver not have to file a claim in the customary sense, the person would receive instant information on which repair shops are members of the insurer's preferred network. And since the repair shops are authorized to be participants in the DAO, the DAO, their smart contracts with the policyholder also become part of the blockchain. All this information is immediately verifiable in real time, allowing a check to be instantly sent to the owner of the vehicle or for the money to be deposited immediately in the person's bank account. Now, for brokerages, these wide-ranging efficiencies that we've been highlighting so far, they will trickle down to the brokers themselves. As the major distribution channel for insurers, the, the more cost-efficient and automated brokerage processes become, then the faster and cheaper products and services will be for the broker's clients and customers. So to achieve this state, 
key tasks would be relinquished by brokerage organizations, relinquished effectively to assumed by the blockchain. Many of the routine administrative functions that brokers currently do today would no longer be required because they are automated in the DAO, the DAO. Smart contracts will have the effect of lowering a broker's administration costs, also improving claims processing and generating the documentation required for payments and certificates, policies and coverage. Other brokerage benefits would include significant reductions in human error and the costs associated with database synchronization and reconciliation, improvements in accounting reconciliations when dealing with managing general agents, MGAs, the wholesale market and retail agents can also more fully be realized. Brokers have the opportunity through blockchain to improve the efficiencies in the associated programs that, that are managed through MGAs. Now, this is low hanging fruit that the industry should grab. Now, a good question is, do these enhancements eliminate vital services that brokers provide? That's a, that's a key question. Well, um, unfortunately, for you, unfortunately for you, the answer is yes and no. Blockchain does take over non-core services that technology can simply do better than human beings and the brokers that, than what brokers currently do now. But a broker's primary service as the natural connection to the, to the insurance client, the customer, it's largely not affected at all. Rather, by making brokers more efficient, blockchain liberates them to put more of their resources into enhancing the relationship with the client. Blockchain eliminates the need for an insurance customer to file a claim with a broker when something goes wrong. So that puts the broker at some risk of disintermediation, but one could argue it should not affect the overall purpose of the broker. Also, I might add that blockchain does not affect how the business comes to an insurer, which has traditionally been, which has been the, the traditional role of the broker for decades. Rather, it is generally focused on, the blockchain is generally focused on claims handling, on improving the customer experience by immediately paying a verifiable claim. This in turn is good for the broker as it improves the customer's satisfaction, reducing the possibility of losing that person or business to another broker or competitor. Now benefits for clients. For clients' customers, they benefit from lower costs due to more efficiency due to better pricing ability, uh, due to uh, a more customer-centric platform with enhanced transparency, with better data safety and verifiability. So perhaps the most tangible net gain for clients is that blockchain improves how a customer's risk profile and needs are coordinated with available risk transfer mechanisms. A customer's risks can be individually assessed in real time and then matched to appropriate products that can be procured via self-executing contracts. Smart contracts enable the insurance industry to move from a segmentation approach to a personalization approach, and that's a fundamental takeaway. Now, let's go back to brokers and focus on that blockchain impact for a moment. For brokers, blockchain will allow for improved customer experience. It will allow for more secure services and delivery of those. It's going to allow for a reduction in fraudulent claims and lower the overall costs. Now, the technology, it does display some elements of what brokers do today, but it's not disruptive in the sense that it provides a comprehensively better way of doing everything. I will add though, that as you can see with our discussion thus far, many elements and abilities of blockchain enabled technologies may favor direct writers, direct carriers. It seems 
blockchain could allow carriers to bypass the broker channel for many lines of insurance and better permit, better permit um, insurers to build direct relationships with various groups of consumers. Now, you have to keep in mind that insurance carriers have larger capital budgets to invest in blockchain development. So brokerages must meet this challenge by grouping together in some form of a consortium so that they to this consortium would co-contribute facilitate co-contributing to the development costs of the technology and then th they can share the resultant benefits among all of them the real challenge for brokers and it is a competitive one is how each firm plans to operationally address the future blockchain environment, but also the present blockchain environment. Blockchain in its current form does have some problems. There's four that come to mind. One is security, as witnessed by digital hackers. And over the last couple of years, there's been some incidents like this, wherein they, they've been stealing Bitcoin by hacking into its network. Another problem is that blockchain cannot quickly handle very large volumes of transactions occurring simultaneously, at least at this stage of its development. A third is that a blockchain can require a very large amount of data storage space and optimization. And there's a lot of costs associated with that. A fourth problem is that blockchains, uh, pardon me, is that regulations have yet to be created to ensure more widespread trust in the technology. Since most blockchain solutions require cross-industry collaboration, as is the case with the insurance business, then this will mean slower development and implementation of a regulatory environment for blockchain, or at least one can expect that. Any party with a direct or even a tangential relationship to an insurance contract would need to participate in the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, in order for blockchain to achieve its full potential. Think about this. For car insurance alone, this would require participation from automobile manufacturers, local police departments, car repair shops, sensor manufacturers, insurance companies, consumers, and regulators. And that list is not even an exhaustive one. And by the way, you may have noted I left out brokers. <clears throat> one key thing to note regarding blockchain is that it is very possible that a new technology may yet emerge to supplant it. It is still too early to say that there is an inevitability to blockchain dominance. At a bare minimum today, though, brokerages need to be digitizing their data and streamlining their processes as a means of being ready for emerging technologies that are disruptive. This means rebuilding IT systems and redesign processes to improve things like customer onboarding and management of customer identity. One option for brokers today is not being ignorant of blockchain technology. Isn't there a lot to be said for simplified processes, guaranteed data accuracy, faster execution of insurance policies, and near real-time payment of claims? Those are some of the things that blockchain offer. So what is your brokerage doing about this? I bet most of you would say nothing. And that's why you'll be out of business within 10 years. At the end of the day, all of the intended and unintended consequences concerning the introduction of blockchain into the insurance industry and society at large, it's just too hard to predict right now, fully predict. We still remain at the experimental stage and not yet near the full scale implementation stage. What is most important about blockchain enabled technology today is that it requires insurance organizations affected by the new ways of doing things to rethink their traditional value proposition. For brokerages, 
This value has long been represented by the close relationships they have cultivated with their clients and customers, affirmed by their deep knowledge of the customer's business and how to mitigate their loss exposures. If you are a broker that matches demand to supply, then your job will perish in a world with blockchain. But if your role is to provide hands-on advice on risk management and to arrange optimal insurance coverages from financially secure carriers and other markets that you should, that you should just be fine. Thus, brokerages should be less about the transaction and become more about the advisory value. Going forward, it must solely be about relationship business driving your brokerage.